you know, within one feet means what? The intimate fellowship, intimate church, God's church, spiritual care. So man is the gem of God's creation. Verse 8, what did God uh, do for us, for the man? The Lord God, Yahweh God, planted a garden in Eden in the east, and there he put the man whom he had formed. God's special care you know, didn't stop there. What did God do for the man? God planted a garden in Eden and put the man there, a garden of Eden, Basically, God prepared a special home, special garden for a man. But God didn't prepare a garden for animals. Have you ever seen that you know, God prepared some special place for any other creatures except man? God prepared the Garden of Eden, special place that a man can enjoy. That is like a father, you know, uh, is building for a house for the uh, you know, sons and daughters. That's God's care. And then let's think about the features of the Garden of Eden. Verse 9, number one, every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. Number two, the life of a tree. Number three, the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Verse the first 10. A river flowed out of the Eden to water the garden. Got a, a, a river. And then the, where there is gold, and verse 12, and the gold is the land is good, and bedellium and onyx stone. So precious stones. So verse 9 through 14 is the uh, you know, paradise. So first, every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. And then two, the tree of life. Three, the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And number four, a river flowed out of Eden to water the garden. Number five, gold, bedellium, and on onyx stone at there. So, uh, namely, tree, river, and gem. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23, there are three parts of man, which is spirit, soul, and body. So, present to the sight, they satisfy our soul. Good for food, satisfy our body. Tree of life, body and spirit. And now, tree of knowledge of good and evil, that spirit, a river body, precious stones source. So through these things, we can be satisfied. Our all three parts of man, human beings are can feel filled. So uh, Adam means what? Joy, happiness, delight, and paradise. Perfect, gorgeous, Wonderful place for a man's fulfillment, no lacking anything, right? And then not only these things, but God gave the mission and acknowledge of God. Verse 15, the Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to work it and keep it. And then that is mission, mission to do. Later, God asked Adam to name the creatures. That is a mission. So, you know, if we eat and satisfied, then, you know, we could be uh, like, uh, uh, have a, gain a lot of weight. But God asked him to work. So there, there would be no diabetes. So, and the verse 16, and the Lord God commanded the man saying, you, you may surely eat of every tree of garden, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. I already mentioned the work to do. 
God also gave God's law to keep so that a man could remember his word and acknowledge God as God. A paradise was given to man, thus a man should be thankful and praising God who created everything for him. So basically, okay, let's talk later. <clears throat> and then verse 18 through 25, there is marriage in the Adam. So marriage was given as man's happiness, one flesh and perfect unity. And verse 23, uh, he said that this at last is born of my bones, at last. That expression means that how much he be uh, glad and joyful. The part one summary. Adam is a perfect place, man's happiness, could be obtained. And one, a man was God's special creation, different from other creatures. God himself touched, I, I mentioned earlier, the distance between God and man within one feet, face to face, so intimate uh, care. Also, God gave a man, Adam, where a man can find happiness, fulfilling body, soul, and the spiritual through acknowledging one is acknowledging one God, two, two became one flesh, three, three trees, a tree, uh, a, a tree of life, a B tree of knowledge of good and evil, C all other trees. Number four, four rivers with many precious stones. Number, so when you think about that, you know, the features of Eden, we can three, one, two, three, four, one, Accumulated one God, two, two became one flesh, marriage, three, three trees, a, a tree of life, a tree of good and evil, and tree of all others. And number four, four rivers out of Adam, so we can easily remember that. So basically, Adam is a perfect place for you know, which God designed for man's happiness. <clears throat> Part two, unhappy man. Misery, paradise, paradise lost. Genesis chapter 3, verse 9. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? That means what? The man is not in the Eden, right? So where are you? Are you in Eden? That means that indicates that a man lost Eden. Genesis chapter 3, verse 24. He drew up the man, and at the east of the Garden of Eden, he placed the cherubim and flames sword, then turned every way to guard the way to the tree of life. And Genesis chapter 3, 19. For you are dust, and to dust you shall return. That means you shall surely die. Separation from God. Death. Lost Adam. Lost God's image. <clears throat> Question, the first man disobeyed, yet why are we also suffering from it? It is because we are under the first man, first Adam. His sin became our sin, thus his death became our death. Thus we are under sin and death, meaning under darkness, without light and without life. If Adam had not disobeyed God, we do not be suffering at all, right? Someone said, someone might have questioned, if Adam had not disobeyed, if Adam didn't sin, then you know, we could be happy. What a wish. But it didn't help us at all because it's done deal. The past things, we can help it, right? If we ask these questions, we are helpless and hopeless. And other theological, uh, theolog theological questions. When God commanded a man, do not eat the tree of knowledge of good and evil, uh, what is your opinion? Uh, 
Uh, my question is that, okay, uh, did God already know that the first human being would disobey? Or did God make Adam disobey? Or why did God give the tree of knowledge, KG, knowledge of good and evil? If God, if God didn't give the tree of KGE, then man could live happily forever. That you know, God caused man's fall. These kind of theological questions we may have. You know, what is your opinion in these questions? You may think about it. The Saint Augustine said that before fall, a man could choose to have life and choose to die choice of life, a choice of death, because there is a two trees, tree of life and tree of KGE, so man can freely choose. After fall, a man has only option to die. And then, after kingdom of heaven, man has only one option, one option to live. So before fall, two options life and death. Currently, after fall, death is our only one option. In the kingdom of heaven, life is the only option. These are the Maya answer. God created a man with God's image. A man could decide what to do with free will reflecting God's image. God didn't create a man like a robot. God wanted a man to choose obey God, remembering, acknowledging God, because it fits God's creation purpose. Yet, right? Yet, God also prepared the other option where a man choose the other way. Make sense? God create, God said that you can choose either one, but either one got prepared. God is very thoughtful and mindful. <clears throat> okay, what about our current situation? Reality check and now what? We don't have God's image. We lost God's image. A man without God's image equals what? Animal because we are created at the same date with the ground, same material, right? And then God put God's image. That became we human beings, that animal without God's image, then we are animals, nothing but the animals. Get it? Right? And there is no tree of life, right? There's no life. But we are full of KGE, what? You know, full of knowledge of good and evil. That's why what? we rebuke. We criticize others. We find the fault to others so easily. That is our, because we ate tree of KGE, full of KGE, yet no life of life and no river actually, spiritually. So life without water means desert and desolate. Desert, desert like life, like a desert. We are, this is our reality and darkness and desert. <clears throat> so uh, lost paradise, lost ship, lost coin and lost sun. In the Luke chapter 15, we have the prodigal son. He was lost his uh, son's you know, right and son's privilege. And he tried to eat pig's food, yet that's not even allowed to him. So he, his label became pig's label. From the rich young man, you know, very precious second son became uh, pig, 
feeder. Now part three, happy man again. God is faithful. The God who had planted the Garden of Eden to man had planted, planted, plant, and is planting and shall plant the Garden of Eden in the kingdom of heaven. So do, do you see that this is not a typo? The God who had planted the Garden of Eden through man had planted and planted, plant, is planting and shall plant the Garden of Eden in the kingdom of heaven throughout the history. So God's care love was not changed at all. And Isaiah 51, verse 3, he said that for the Lord, for the Lord comforts Zion. He comforts all her wasted place and makes her wilderness like Eden, her desert like the garden of the Lord. And joy and gladness will be found in her thanksgiving and the voice of the song. Let's think about further. Prophet Isaiah talks about the restoration of Jerusalem in the view of Eden. At that time, uh, Israelites were in Babylon captivity. Jerusalem became waste place, and wilderness and desert. Only a very famous and noble men were kept captive, right? Captive in Babylon. Only like uh, losers were in the uh, in the Jerusalem. They were like a desert and wilderness. Yet. Isaiah, prophet Isaiah, prophet Isaiah foretold the desolate Jerusalem like Eden and the Garden of the Lord. Prophet Isaiah talked about restoration of the Jerusalem like uh, Eden. This is the shadow of New Jerusalem from Kingdom of Heaven. New Jerusalem, Revelation chapter 21, 18 through 21. 18, the world was built of jasper, where, while the city was pure gold like clear glass. 19, the foundations of the world of the city were adorned with every kind of jewel. The first was jasper, the second uh, sapphire, the third agate, the fourth emerald. 20, the fixed onyx, the sixes, carnelian, the seventh, chrysolite, the eighth, barrio, the ninth, tapet, the tenth, the crystal, chrys, chrysoprase, the eleventh, justice, the twelfth, amethyst. Very hard to pronounce. <clears throat> the world. The world is the twelve words, right? And these are the representing each world has that, you know, jewels, gems. And the 12 gates were 12 pores. Each world has its gems. You know, each 12 gate has a 12 pores. Each of the gates made of single pole and the streets of the city were pure gold like transparent glass. Can you imagine? Jewel and the door is, you know, a porch and the streets of gold, the streets of the city was pure gold. Uh, New Jerusalem, verse 22, one through four. The, then the angel, of, the angel showed me the river of the water of life. And verse 2, through the middle of the street of the city, also on either, either side of the river, the tree of life, with its 12 kinds of fruit, yielding its fruit each month. The leaves of tree were for the healing of the nation, and then no longer will be there any accused, which means there is no KGE, but the throne of God and the Lamb of them will be in it. Can you compare 
the uh, Eden in Genesis and Eden in Revelation. <clears throat> right? There are all, all things the same. But you know, even the jewels, gems, and life, a river. Also, uh, marriage in Eden, shadow of marriage between church and Jesus. In Eden, I mentioned that marriage as the happiness of uh, man's happiness. Uh, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 31 through 32, this mystery is profound, and I'm saying that it refers to Christ and the church. And 2 Corinthians 11, verse 1 through 2, I wish you would bear with me in a little uh, foolishness. Do bear with me, for I feel a divine jealousy for you since I betrothed you to the one husband to present you as a pure virgin to Christ. So Apostle Paul's mission is that bring we to bridegroom. That's his mission. So church as a bride, and then uh, Jesus as bridegroom. That is also, so marriage in the Genesis is a shadow of the kingdom of heaven, the intimate relationship between church and Jesus. So uh, we can go th think about deeper. Eden in Genesis and Eden in Revelation. Eden in Genesis is the shadow of Eden in Revelation, kingdom of heaven. Everything is the same except the tree of KGE I mentioned earlier. Why? Why do you think there is no KGE? This is my answer, my, my opinion, my humble opinion. Jesus fulfilled the requirement of law. Jesus died on the cross. That, that's because of Jesus, there is no uh, KGE, no knowledge of uh, Korean and Abel. And then Luke chapter 20 through 39 through uh, 43, Jesus mentioned about the paradise. <clears throat> there are two criminals hanging together with Jesus, and then we know all the story. And the other uh, one criminal accused or you know uh, rebuked Jesus. Yet the other guy said that for 42, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said that truly I said to you, today you will be with me in paradise, which means the kingdom of heaven. So paradise, Adam. What about us? <clears throat> what about us? Luke chapter 15, we, I talk about the man's existence without Father, without Jesus, without God. Our level became animal level, right? Below the human level. But later, he remembered Father and then he decided to come back to his father's house. And what did the father do for him? He mentioned to his servants, bring the best rope and put a ring on his hand. That is uh, like a gem, jewelry, so best rope. So, We became the children of God. That means in the kingdom of heaven, we were restored. We are found again. So we can be happy again. And first Peter chapter two, verse nine, Peter mentioned that you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a people for his own possession, 
verse 10, once you are not a people, but now you are God's people. <clears throat> so we can think about it later. Further? Conclusion. I want to uh, spend most of my time here. As God planted a garden of Eden for a man in Genesis beginning, God already planted Adam for a man in Revelation. And basically, as God planted Adam, Eden in the beginning, God had planted a kingdom of heaven, a Eden, for us. That is already because God is faithful, because uh, we see that God created a man from the dust and put the, his breath into his nostrils, intimate. So God's character doesn't change at all. God is faithful. God is love. So God's love didn't change at all. Even a man disobeyed. God cannot change their own. So the man, the God who prepared Adam in Genesis is the one who had planted, planted, plant, is planting, will plant the Garden of Eden. <clears throat> and then under the first man, first Adam, we lost Adam, Eden. Yet under the second man, second Adam, which is Jesus, we recovered Eden. First Corinthians chapter 15, 45 through 49. Thus it is written, the man, the first man Adam became a living being, the last Adam became a, a life-giving spirit. Verse 49, just as we have to born the image of the man of dust, we shall also bear the image of the man of heaven, which means that just as we have the dust, the image of dust, right? And then we will have the image of the man of heaven, which means that we will be participate in Jesus' resurrection. We are 100% for sure we have body. Right? As we have physical body, but we will have spiritual body. We will be resurrected in the kingdom of heaven. We, are, we were on the first Adam, that's why we're dead. But now we are on the second Adam, which is Jesus Christ. And then because of that, Jesus gave us life into us. You know, we already know that Jesus was crucified. Jesus was Jesus died. Yeah, Jesus resurrected. In following Jesus, we will be like a Jesus. We will be resurrected like a Jesus. A conclusion too. And then also we are guaranteed to be in the kingdom of heaven as the children of God. <clears throat> then how do we know for sure that we are going to inherit the kingdom of heaven, Adam? If you read Ephesians chapter 1, you could see that the guarantee for sure we will inherit the kingdom of heaven. Verse 4, he chose us in him before the foundation of the world. And then verse 5, he predestined us for adoption to himself as sons. And verse 11, in him we have obtained an inheritance. Verse 13, in him you also when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in him, was sealed with the promised Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is the guarantee of our inheritance. Wow. 
we heard the gospel and we believed in Jesus and we were sealed with the Holy Spirit. We heard that, we believed that in Jesus and the Holy Spirit came upon us. We were sealed with the Holy Spirit and that Holy Spirit is guarantee of God's kingdom in Adam in the kingdom of heaven. So do you, do you get it? Since the Holy Spirit is in us, we are for sure that we will inherit the kingdom of heaven because of the Holy Spirit. We heard that, we believed in it, the Holy Spirit came upon us, that guarantee our kingdom of heaven, Adam. Wow, that is guaranteed. We will go to the kingdom of heaven. This is a good news of happiness. Isaiah chapter 52, verse 7. Wow. We talked about Adam, Eden in Genesis. How can you know, God create Eden for man's happiness? God gave what? First, acknowledge, number one, acknowledge one God. Two, two became one flesh. Three, three trees, four, four rivers, right? And then fifth, jam and marriage. Every, the conditions of man's happiness. God prepared Eden for man, but man disobeyed. And now, you know, because of, you know, Adam's disobedience, death kicked in. And our situation, we lost God's image. That's why we became uh, less than the animals. Luke chapter 15, you know, the son, when he was, when he was in the father's house, he's very precious. When he departed, when he separated from, you know, God's house, he became animal level. Later, he remembered God and returned, he returned and God restored, bring the best rope and the ring, you know, gem. And then we, you know, uh, talked about the wall of, in the kingdom of heaven, the gate, everything God planted in the kingdom of heaven. And then we will be there as the children of God. So uh, that's why we should be thankful and we should be joyful. Why? Because we have a kingdom of heaven. We don't need to be sad because Eden, God had prepared for us. Don't worry, be happy, we have Eden. Okay, so ice breaking. God gave Eden, right? God gave Eden. And what about God gave E-D space E-N? That's my question. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we have been talking about, you know, God gave Eden, E-D-E-N, God gave Eden, Eden, right? We understand. What about God gave E-D, and we have space E-N. The, the difference is Eden and Eden, um, E-D-E-N, what? Pardon? Eternal and what? Yeah, yeah, th that, that is correct. Okay, so ED stands for eternal dust. That is uh, our, we were created from the dust. So we were the dust on the darkness, right? But God gave EN, 
everlasting or eternal nation, which is an eternal nation, which is a kingdom of heaven. So God gave Eden, God gave E.D., E.N., God gave E.N. to E.D. So, get it? E.N. stands for everlasting nation, the uh, eternal nation. So God gave, God gave eternal dust in you know, our miserable man, everlasting in you know, a kingdom, everlasting nation. God gave Eden. Yeah, that 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 that. That, that, that's good. <laughs> God. We were dust, but he gave us an eternal nation. Yeah. So we, we can think about throughout that we can think about God. We can think about God's grace, God's amazing love. You know, we are nothing but the dust. Yet God gave Adam, Eden, kingdom of heaven. That, that, is, that, that is everlasting thanks topic. God chose us who are like dust on, on this earth. God chose us and gave us new life and lifted it up as a king. God gave us a rope and promised to enter the kingdom of heaven. We are guaranteed to enter the kingdom of heaven. This is the good news of happiness, good news of Eden. Right, this is really good news. And then uh, for the uh, uh, Theo and Madeline, like a young man, well, what should we do? We should remember your creator in the days of your youth. As I mentioned, Luke chapter 15, when do you think the second son like uh, obtained the kingdom of heaven? When is the starting point? of having rope, having a wing. That is when in the darkness, when he remembered God's love. When he remembered God in the midst of darkness, he returned. That is the starting point of having kingdom of heaven, heaven Eden. So that's why uh, uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse 1a remember your creator which means remember your creator also remember Adam the kingdom of heaven okay thank you and let me pray uh, most gracious heavenly father thank you for today's passage uh, God created uh, Eden for us, uh, God uh, planted a kingdom of heaven for us. We are like a dust of the ground. We are like a, uh, really nothing. But you chose us and you called us as a chosen people, a royal priesthood, uh, and uh, uh, your holy nation. What a privilege. What a God's calling, what a God's grace upon us, oh Lord. But uh, sometimes as we live these days, uh, we are filled with any uh, Satan's attacks. We have many things, many difficulties that make us sad. We have uh, many problems, but remembering that uh, God prepared the kingdom of heaven, we cannot be, uh, we cannot, uh, be sad, but we can be happy, and then we can rejoice always, and that's why we can give thanks in all circumstances. Please remember our creator. In the name of Jesus, I pray.